Hey there, Chris, hey me. All right, okay, I guess. Uh, it's good as can be expected. But anyway, this is called a cinema. I am Aaron, this is my movie library. Tonight, well, we kind of talked a bit earlier on like my Seven Dream Order for this big sale that's going on. I updated that, I put more stuff into it. I wanted to make this new with more bells and whistles. And uh, we'll do like a, uh, more of the uh hey jay we'll do more of the uh of the uh of the room thing because i have been getting a lot of positive response on that so hopefully we'll get that done tonight and try to make it at least as long as the one that we uh that we did earlier I had some issues with some um with some uploading issue on that one there and uh that's uh kind of a i'm way behind on tag titan actually but as you guys know, Severin's sale is going on for two more hours, and I, unfortunately, still can't get anything out of that sale. I'm so sad. Reload buzzing from me. Oh, I know what it is. Hold on. Is that better? See, I was charging up my iPad a little bit. When, yeah. <laughs> hey, Vinny, welcome, man. It's been a while. Um, Hopefully you're doing good and you're self-isolated and all stuff. Uh, yeah, I had, I had my iPad plugged in because I was charging a little bit more before I started the video. I forgot to unplug it. And when you have your iPad plugged in when you're charging and you're doing a video at the same time, it creates like a buzzing sound over there. I've been watching horror movies. I quarantined myself this morning. I watched a little bit of, well, I worked because I work from home. Uh, well, I do now. Um, and I ended up watching a little bit of Love is Blind. I'm a little bit ashamed of that. But that's that is actually what I did, and uh, I watched it on my break too. So you guys are watching. You guys are making way better choices than me on for uh, for watching at this point. And you think that I would? I have so much cool cheesiness here to dive into. So for the people that are new here right now, what I'm doing first off, because well, I'm going to be going around the room in a while, I'm going to get some recommendations. First, I'm going to do my updated Seven Dream Order list. Um, I'm eight days away from my birthday, which I'm not going to lie, did manage to get me a little depressed earlier, just just a wee bit. So we'll uh, we'll check this out. I did bring down the trusty iPad of uh, or the Magic Mirror iPad. Hey there. So that I can't, so I can just do more than tell you what I, what I want to pick up. But I, well, what I want to, but can't at the moment. Uh, but I can actually show you with the glorious joy of iPads. And since some of you've seen this before and some of you haven't, I'll try to snazz it up a bit and make it a little bit different. And I did add more uh, wants onto the list as well, so it won't be the same as before. For you, what is it? Demons 5. Oh, these are ones that aren't out, right? Demons 5, Demon 6, the Black Cat, the Rejuvenator. With the Rejuvenator, I can see that happening. Hey, take two, Dave. Uh, how's it going? So, going to shock some people with this, and uh, then we're going to gonna go around the room. So if you are here for the room por like portion of it, make sure you stay. Don't, don't leave me. Don't make me sing that whole please don't go song because that's not a pretty th thing for either one of us. I am feeling iffy, but I am determined to try and make as much content for you guys and as much quality content, I hope, as possible. So it, where I'm not getting anything coming in the nearby future, um, and I'm totally bummed by that, but it's a first world problem. So... I'm going to be doing some dream lists, and I'm going to be doing some uh, some tours around the around here. I'm going to do some recommendation stuff. So it's going to be a, a whole potpourri of uh, stuff. So hopefully we'll get as we'll get people like we got in there. I had a few people on here this this afternoon. Uh, I'm hoping that where it's later, I'll get more people. So fingers crossed. All right. So this one right here, I'm not even going to say the name, but look, because you know, though it looks like an awesome film. It is just Franco. It has Lena Romay, and I'm a big Lena Romay fan. Um, I almost got to meet her once, but I messed out on that. Um, 
she was doing a talk. So, but that one, that definitely. Now this is one that I'm kind of kicking myself that I can't get because I'm thinking, and I'm pretty sure. Well, you guys can let me know for sure. Is this? It wasn't this one of the Black Friday ones that is. You know, was it a print? Hey, William. So this is the done much like the Mondo set that they put out. With, with this as a wild, wild world of of, of Jane Mansfield. <laughs> she did enjoy them, Jay, and Mondo. B Belordo. That's one of the things I liked about her. She was really a uh, proponent for that. So this is a double. This is a, a set which has two uh, two Blu-rays in it, uh, running for thirty dollars, and which is actually pretty cool for like uh, for for a two uh, Blu-ray set. Uh, each of them has a as a, a bonus film on them actually. One of them is like the Weird World of, it of Italy or something like that, um, but. Interestingly fun stuff. And of course, Mondo Bellarodo is narrated by the great Boris Karloff, who's I cannot do an impression of to save my life. Next up is Yeah, I know what you got. Jay. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Stay inside, George. Stay safe. What hopefully lockdown. It might take a while, but it'll be uh, it'll be worth it. Lockdown now, and uh, hopefully be like cut it, like flatten the curve, and and keep things uh, keep things good. The buys next door. So this stars Maxwell Caulfield, who was an actor that I really like because you you guys all know that I love Grease too, and of course he was in Colby's, which was a sequel to Dynasty, the TV series. I actually loved that. It ran two seasons, and it ended on a on a cliffhanger. Of somebody being abducted by a UFO and I couldn't make it up if I tried. Actually, I probably could because I'm a writer, but no, that's true. Somebody got abducted by a UFO in the last episode of the Colby's. Don't worry, she got better and got back. Uh, this is actually a really cool film. If you've never checked it out, it's directed by Penelope Spears, who's a fantastic director. The Boys Next Door is one that I do recommend. And if you want to get The Boys Next Door and send it my way, I feel free to do so. Uh, excellent film. Next up is Paganini Horror. It's Italian. It's got Donald Pleasance. It's got Daria Nicolotti, who I was totally in love with at one point. Uh, she is amazing. Every, this is fun. It is fun. It is cheesy. It is Italian, so it's going to have a low rating. Don't let the rating, like, don't let the rating sway you. Because, come on, do you think Sh Shocking Dark is going to get a, get a good rating? Do you think Zombie 4 and Zombie 5 are getting a good rating? Of course they're not. Did Troll 2 get a good rating? No. But did you enjoy them? I hope so, because they're fun films. And a lot of them are done by Bruno Mattei or Claudio Fregasso. And I, I think Fregasso might have had a little bit to do with this one right here. Next up is the classic. Well, I'll say classic because ah, nobody else will. Uh, Robo War. It's like Robocop except it's a war. I'm going with that. It's got a CD soundtrack and I gotta say, I love Severn CD soundtracks. They're, uh, oh man. You can always ask me. I'm not sure if I'm good at love advice. Bec but ask in general in here. I'll try to do my best, or maybe the group can help you out. Because I'm not sure how good I am with that stuff. Why do you call that Terminator 2 on slipcover? Well, uh, well, shocking dark, you mean? Uh, because in Italy, it was called Terminator 2. It was, I think it actually came out before Terminator 2, so it was the first Terminator 2. Uh, something they couldn't get away with over here, uh, obviously, because uh, they would have got their butt sued. But it was called Terminator 2, much in the way that, like, I think Cruel Jaws was called Jaws 5. Uh, I don't have any of these, Jacob. This is the thing. This is my dream list. These are ones that I would love to have. Uh, the, with the sale going on, like I know that some of you guys are getting in on the sale, so I'm giving you some. Uh, a Robo War is like an Italian film, and a lot of these here, you're not going to see much French stuff in uh, in Severin, unless it's like uh, maybe like a, a yeah, uh, <laughs> an exploitation one. But <laughs> try not to let anything explode on you. Uh, be, careful, be careful with that. The Beast in Heat is a Nazi exploitation film. Is it one of the best? No, it's not one of the best. 
Hey Steve, what am I up to right now? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure what everybody else is up to, but I am doing a dream list of seven titles that I don't have because I always show you stuff that I have. And at the beginning, I'm going to do that a little bit later, but right now I'm showing you a dream list of stuff that I, that I would love to have that I don't have. That I made it way more confusing than it had to be. It's a dream list. That's what it is for Severin. Uh, the Beast and Heat as a documentary, a full feature length documentary on Nazi exploitation, something that I have a, a specific interest in, and I have not seen a good documentary on Nazi exploitation ever, and this is pretty much the only one to grab. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, let's everybody else like. On, on like the that's a bit of an age difference um so you want to be within like a when you're like older um like you're 18 or 19 and look you're 18 and 25 or something yeah okay or you're 20 and you're 25 but yeah i'd say you want to keep within a, a year and a half to two year age difference when it comes to like uh, dating especially in high school but uh i haven't been in high school for a long time so ask the room they'll be able to answer better <laughs> it is a rip off of the robocop suit alan all these italian ones are now this isn't italian right here though this is new zealand this is new zealand's first splatter film uh with starring michael hurst who would go on to be in play Aeolus in hercules legendary journeys and then would go on to be a director himself and uh, direct actually quite a uh, have a pretty good uh filmography i'd have to go back and look but this is the one that i mentioned before that pretty much ha has him it, it's hilarious you, you just have to check it out he he plays young version of himself in short pants and he plays older version of himself with his hair dyed and he also uh he pees on a truck and it causes a lot of problems because because that's what happens uh death warmed up next to kin I, I don't think i have to say much about this one except it's an australian film it's excellent and if you haven't checked it out, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I'm going to let you check it out on your own. It's a really, really good film. Axe and Kidnap Cohead. Honestly, I just really want this one's Harry Novak. And Harry Novak is definitely one of those guys where I see the name and I, I kind of want to get it. I know there's cheese. I know it's going to be kind of low budget. <laughs> there, Carlito. See, there you got your chance. Uh, the Uncanny. Uh, Cats anthology with a great cast again Peter Peter Cushing Donald Pleasance Ray Milland and super enjoyable next up is the classic werewolf and a girl's dormitory which actually is a classic uh, this is the first time that it's been uncut uh, definitely worth checking out and uh, super enjoy this uh this film right here so i don't know if there's one with like a soundtrack if there is maybe worth checking out mr science theater has a lot of this stuff on there the devil's reign which i love this cover just look at this cover can you it's got a very cool comic booky type cover And I really enjoy uh, the way this is done. And it's a cool movie. It's got William Shatner in it. And he's got this kind of, hey, Dungeon Studio, welcome, man. He's got this kind of like, uh, well, it looks like the mask <laughs> from Michael Myers because his face melts. There's a lot of face melt, melting stuff. Bloody Moon with Lucio Fulci. Uh, again, Lucio Fulci slasher film. Lucio, no, Just Franco. Sorry, Just Franco. Ah. Third Wolfman loves that film. It's, he has good taste, see? Eh? Do I have any more? Yes, I do. Emmanuel versus, and Francois. Francis? Francois? Oh. Which is Joe D'Amato. And I like Joe D'Amato, but I probably wouldn't pick that one up anyway. And I'll tell you why. Because they're doing an Emmanuel box set. And I am pretty much, hopefully, down for that. Which should, which should be lots and lots. And lots of fun. Hey, Joseph. All right, we are back here for the Q and A portion of the video. Before I go around the uh, go around the room, and do stuff like that, give me time to like rest up my uh, my back. Um, 
Try and keep it mostly movie related. Hey, Emily, welcome, man. I, I didn't, Emily. I was, uh, I spoke with a couple of my friends and, uh, because let me find out what I, because it's the distributor that looks to be shut down. Uh, it's probably not happening in April. It's not going to happen in April. Uh, cause the distributor, you know, so the, everything probably isn't made right now. So we could be in for a bit of a wait for the Al Adams and set. I want to say May, and I think that's being, what's the word I'm looking for? Optimistic. That's a, uh, and trust me, I mean, no one's more, is more upset than, uh, than me <laughs> about, uh, about that because that's my birthday present. And uh, I am having a birthday with no presents. <laughs> that sucks ass. And without my kitty. So uh, double, double crappy. But I'll keep, if I hear anything else, I'll definitely let you know. Because it's, uh, it's been a really, it's been a bit, a bit of a bummer. Oh yeah, so you know, what do you do with everything going on like that? I wish I saved more money because what I would have done, I would have bought from the sale because this sale is excellent, this Severn sale. Did you get anything from sale, Emily? Death laid an egg. I, I like death laid an egg. Your birthday's all right. I like almost twin birthdays. You're in Aries. Aries was rock. BMV. <laughs> I should watch a gel or something like that tonight. Oh, that's what I was going to do uh, initially. Uh, but I decided I want to make a video here for you guys. I mean, like, there's lo there's there. They haven't said, like, but I know there's, like, st for some of them, they went with under 200 and stuff, like, went really fast. Night Killer was gone in, like, insanely quickly. Uh, and then Night Killer's, even the Blu ray and the DVD Night Killer went. And the, uh, the, the, the bundle was gone too so that one was like it was just out of there um let me just open up the uh, seven page i'll uh let's look at what's sold out actually that's a kind of a good question did i see i have the alien set here i'm not so big in the new alien movies but i did like the originals oh, that's my come on come on everybody it's a vinegar syndrome yeah, that's the thing. I I was looking at both of them. I, I spoke to my better half. I said, you know, my birthday stuff isn't going to come on time. Is there any chance of getting something? She's like, ah, too tight right now. And uh, then uh, then I then I sucked for a bit, and that didn't work. So so here we are. So I'm making a, a dream order video uh, about stuff I can't get, and uh, hopefully entertaining you guys while you're locked inside like me okay so stuff that's sold out let's look at what's sold out from uh from Severn during that sale um because we look at some stuff there so the open pleasure bundle's gone the astrologer blu-ray is gone uh cries of pleasure both blu-ray and dvd have sold out um uh the uh, peanut burst solution the blu-ray that is sold out as well it's my better half make a lot of money none of us are making a lot of money right now Oh, we do we do okay i mean like at this point in time uh shut down some other things have made things extremely tight but uh you know normally uh we all right hell night or fun house um i go with hell night i like them both like they're both fantastic either way you go you're good um fun house is more is a more iconic though so maybe maybe fun house but either way either way you're good i go back and forth um, Gwendolyn, uh, in the land of the, uh, Yik Yak, the limited edition one is gone, but you can still get the regular. Hey, Eric, welcome, man. The, oh, Killer Crocodiles are there, if you guys didn't pick up that one yet. So is Wax Mask, but, like, Night Killer, Blu-ray gone. Night Killer, DVD gone. Uh, uh, that blew me away. Like, I was gonna, if, I would have sucked up like her. I would have, I would have tried to put on my tears to get, to get my better half to buy me night killer but it sold out so it, it kind of saved me like saved my tear ducts for now 
and I get really surprised. Emmanuel and Francois, the original Blu-ray of that one, uh, is gone. The, they got the limited edition slipcover version there. Lockdown is super going to suck, man. A Hemisphere Box of Horrors was there, so I hope you guys that didn't have that picked that up. Um, Blood, Invasion of the Blood Farm is the DVD sold out, but not the Blu-ray. I don't know why. I can't figure that one. That's one I've been trying to get my head around. Um, why did the DVD of that one sell out? And like the Blu-ray is still available. All the DVD versions of the Blood Island films, so except for Tears of Man sold out. So Brides of Blood sold out. Uh, was that? I don't think it was a Russ Meyer film. I'd have to look back. I haven't seen Mondo uh, Barlo, Barlotto myself. I don't think it's Russ Meyer though. I don't have that one, Emily. I'm jealous of you. Mad Doctor Blood Island on DVD is sold out. I'm guessing some people are going in at the end and just don't have enough money for the Blu-ray, so they're just picking up the DVDs just to get the copies because they're such good prices that are on right now. I mean, like 30% off doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're when you're going down to uh, when you're putting it in your cart and you're noticing how much is taken off of it, it actually is pretty damn good. Um, the limited to changing is available if you don't have that. Like Shocking Dark, so much fun. Depends on location, I think. Read. Your last massage a message okay <laughs> um well I, he didn't read really, it i only think of one mondo title, title that russ myers actually did right like mondo topless uh like he did a lot of movies with like vixen in the title uh but i can't think of like a lot of mondo titles like mondo topless for sure but uh were there any more Baskin sold out on DVD, and that's a UK only exclusive. So UK buyers are buying from this as well. They did a Screwballs loose screw Blu-ray bundle, which also sold out. Enjoy the movie there. And a Laura Yemser bundle sold out. Actually, two of them did. But you can still buy the movie set like separately. Uh, you can still get threads in lenticular cover. I want to get Devolved. Uh, I've heard good things about Devolved. It's like only ten dollars. It's a Blu-ray there. Um, can't get it now, but I had like Lindsay Shaw who was in like one of those shows my kids used to watch, and I think she was in Pretty Little Liars as well. I don't know, like I'd have to look into it, but I'm pretty sure, um, like the Mondo Topless might have been his only one, um, like in Mondo, like, like he definitely made that style of film, but uh, you you could be right. So if you can Google it, let me know. You can say, look, you're wrong. You, you're totally wrong on this. And I will say, you've schooled me again, which I am perfectly fine with. Um, feel free to take me to school anytime. I love to learn new stuff. Kathy's Curse sought out, so I know somebody got that one here. Uh, so good and congratulations on that, because that's a fantastic release with great features. Oh, my, no, like there's a, a type of film, uh, William, Call it like mono films, and they're kind of like uh, they're supposed to be like kind of like documentaries. Uh, uh, I'll check it out in a second, there, right, Ellen. I just want to get through this part. There's Zulu Don sold out and Wild Geese. That really surprises me. <laughs> um, I'm surprised Trail of Dracula isn't sold out at ten bucks though. Uh, that's exploitation. The DVD sold out. And, no, the Blu-ray sold out. That's exploitation. So congratulations, who picked that one up? That's a fantastic documentary, uh, which I do 100% recommend. Vampire Lesbos, that was their collector's edition. That sold out. Uh, they did the, 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 the Video Nasties box set, which actually sold out. Well, box with two of them sold put together. God, there can't be that much more. Black Venus sold out. Uh, like some of the DVDs are selling out too. That's really surprising. Shipping can be a little bit pricey uh, depending on where we're at with Severin. I'll be honest with you there. Like sometimes shipping... So you got to be careful with the way you uh, with the way you put things in. So go in and like experiment, like put your address there, see what the shipping's going to be. Shipping would have been a, a tiny bit pricey, but considering the price, the amount I would have got off would have been would definitely more than evened out. Looks like they put more here because I don't remember this stuff being here before. I don't remember Beasts in Space being here before, uh, or a Devil Hunter or Cannibal Terror on their own, or even Nightmare Castle on DVD. Those were added to the sale as well. But there you go. Shipping is one month. 
hopefully uh, i'm not quite sure yet now i i suppose to check the last message here and i and i do apologize for not checking it before but i wanted to get through stuff <laughs> just be happy because i have a sexy better half who, who i love that is true um uh, i am i am blessed in that way Mondo Topless to another called Mondo Mounds. I don't know about Mondo Mounds, actually. Well, Mondo Top would definitely be kind of a rust idea. Um, you gotta see, back in the day, is everybody familiar with Mondo Films or uh, what Mondo Films are? There was this like time period where they would put these, these, these Mondo style films together. And Mondo pretty much were, were they like, was meant to be kind of like a a pseudo kind of documentary where you'd with titillation and like you'd see like go to the the seedy sex clubs of, of London or or go into like the the look at this cannibalistic tribe um, and a lot of the stuff would basically like some of it they'd go and they'd get some like pretty footage like you know and the, a lot of it would be staged they wouldn't actually go to see cannibal tribes or anything like that but it was a way to put like nudity and titillation out there at a time when like uh, when censorship was still kind of a kind of a bigger thing uh, Mondo really didn't last for a long period of time there's actually a box set I think that uh, I think it was Anchor Bay that put out I could be wrong though uh, like a, a, a bunch of Mondo movies like Mondo Kane and stuff like that um, but I don't remember which one started the whole Mondo trend but I got a couple of them. my better half got me the uh, got me a a Jallo uh, box set on the Black Friday when they did the Black Gloves uh, set and uh, one of the uh, the movies that came with that uh, was uh, were two Mondo films, and uh, I got them over there. Which uh, I'll maybe bring them over in a minute, actually, or I'll go over there when I go over there. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But does anybody here, or has anybody ever collected any of the Mondo stuff? Or do I sound like, or do I sound kind of crazy now? <laughs> Mondo bondage. I want to see when the fir what the first Mondo film was. Because inquiring minds have to know. Yeah, see a subgenre of exploitation documentary films, pseudo documentaries. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Things are going to take a while now. Uh, that's the killer part. Well, they show a bunch of them. They don't tell me which one's first. They consider the face of death mono films, I guess in a way, but I don't think I don't consider anything an actual mono film unless the word mono is put in front of it. So, uh, yeah, they're they're more of a curiosity. They're they're a curio more than like uh, than actual like. I don't think there's a lot of people out there are gonna be like, you know, got on their jackets and their pipes and they're sitting around in their in in their smoking room like. Discussing Mondo films. Do we have the original Gone in Six? I used to actually. I think I do somewhere, uh, but not quite sure where. Uh, I could buy the Walmart once for like five bucks. It was uh, actually a pretty good price. But have I seen it in years? No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't seen the the new Gone in Sixty Seconds in a long time. And, well, new per se. Trilogy. There's three of them. No, I've only got the first one. <laughs> so uh, no, I, obviously I, I do not. Uh, but before what I did, and what I'm going to do here in a minute is I'm going to get up and hopefully feel better than I did the last time around. And we're going to go into the movie library. And we're going to look at stuff. You guys are going to. I'm going to. You guys had all kinds of suggestions before on films and all that type of stuff. I'll show you the Mondo box set that I got, and uh, that I got that one from Severin. If in case you guys are interested in picking up something like that. And uh, we'll look at some other stuff as well. So you can ask questions, and we'll uh, we'll talk about uh, things, cool things. Are you ready? Whoa, that's way too close to have my face. That's just like creepy. Kind of weirds me out. All right, so. <laughs> yeah, Russ Meyer. Actually. <laughs> uh, I actually like uh, Amazon Women on the Moon has so many different actors in it. It's, it's almost uh, insane, like the amount of people 
that uh, come into uh, that come into those films, into that film. I, I love those that type of film. So, oh, first off, I got to make sure it's no nudity. Got to check that nudity check, and there is of course there is, and of course there is. So let me do this correctly. So this is Mondo Frito and Mondo Bizarro. And, oh God, I can't even show back this one. And Forbidden and Echo. Can I show the, oh, I still can't show these, can I? Yes, I can. Just making sure. So these are Mondo titles. Now, something I would consider kind of in the Mondo vein as well, uh, were these here, uh, and they were done like Primitive London and London in the Raw, which uh, were put out by BFI actually. So these here would be like uh, Mondo titles. And of course, because I always like to show this off, because I have to, I stand up and like eight people leave. They're like, this is usually the part where people want to come into my videos and Russ Meyer had, of course, the one I got here is Mondo Topless. This is usually my favorite part to do, Amy, to be honest with you, because I'm more hyper. Oh, BFI has done a lot of stuff, man. Uh, people think BFI is just like the kind of the classic stuff, but uh, where's that? Like BFI even did some like Elaine, so that you, like Trans Europe Express and uh, they did successive, what's it called? Uh, slidings of Pleasure. Uh, yeah, BFI, The Devils was put out by BFI. Uh, so <laughs> they did a, a, a quite a few uh, different things. You know, before I was showing different stuff here, people asked about ghost stories. I, I mentioned like uh, basically a uh, like ghost story by Peter Straub. I mentioned The Changeling. Um, I got asked about some like uh, some classic stuff, and I showed off a few a uh, few classic uh, DVDs that I had here. So it's really up to you guys which way we go. Like right here, this is my Vinegar Syndrome uh, Scream Factory is right here. All this is Arrow. All, all this is Arrow stuff. Oh yeah. Oh no. BFI does a lot of cool stuff. So see, BFI is the only one to put out, although it's still in the it's cut format, so the, still doesn't have uncut. The Two Disc Edition of the Devils with Oliver Reed. Excellent film, by the way. And my one of my favorite. <laughs> I got to read that. <laughs> Just moves. <laughs> to make him straight to the twilight zone. Uh, is Deep End. This one right here, if you've never seen this movie, I recommend this movie to people. They watch it, then they say, you're right, this is a fantastic film. This is put out by BFI, it's called Deep End. It was put out on their uh, BFI flip side, which does a little bit more of the kind of the other uh, riskier titles uh, and the more uh, unique titles. So if you've never checked this one out, definitely 100% watch Deep End. It's a really, really good movie. Yeah, you can never be too sure. But I don't want. I kind of want to tell, but I don't want to, Alan. Uh, Deep End. It starts off like it's a coming of age story, with this guy that works at this, uh, like the, well, the, this kind of like this massage, like pool place, like as a like swing pool, and he starts to fall for this girl. That's there, and uh, I, I can't say anything other than that. It's it takes some some big twists along the way. And it leaves you kind of shocked, and has some great, great features on it uh, that are definitely worth checking out. And if you want to find stuff like Deep End or London the Raw or uh, stuff like that, then BFI and you want to get it on Blu-ray. BFI does uh, uh, something called Flipside. I wouldn't say risque, no, uh, but it's uh, definitely not risque. Uh, but it's a different film, and it may be a bit darker than than at first. Uh, looks like it, like it's going to be, and that's uh, that's that's the big thing right away, is that it's going to get into darker territories than you realize, 
and it's going to take you down some roads that you didn't expect it to go down. And I always love when a movie does that, when a movie can surprise me. I've seen so many films, uh, like many of you guys. Um, so when you see something that really kind of takes you aback, uh, and you're like, I didn't see it going this way. Uh, and, and it does it in a, in a way where it's a natural progression and it makes sense, then yeah. And Deep End, I'll put it by BFI on DVD and BFI Flipside on Blu-ray, definitely 110% does that. And there's a great short film on there as well uh, by that director called, uh, and you will, it's run ten, it runs 10 minutes, it's called like uh, Careless Love, and it is, uh, oh, it will stick with you. It, you it, trust me, it'll stick with you. And there's a 74 minute documentary on the making of, Be of Deep Love, uh, sorry, Deep Love, Deep End on here as well. So a lot of features on this stuff. BFI tends to have a lot of really good features. And they put in some stuff that I, I think don't, like directors that I don't think get enough credit. And uh, I'm not sure if I got any UK uh, watchers on here right now, because I'm sure, uh, UK or Scotland. Uh, but uh, Bill Forsyth is actually a really good director that uh, people don't talk about enough. And uh, this is that sinking feeling. He does a few like, uh, yeah, think of, well, th the, think of like British Criterion. In a way, I guess you want to put it like that. Um, but they do definitely do some stuff that I would consider, I, like, much like you, Brian, when you s would blind buy Criterion, uh, I, would, I would say if you were buying BFI stuff, it's, you can blind buy it and feel pretty comfortable. Uh, like thinking, okay, yeah, I know I'm going to get a good film, and it's going to be good quality. I know there's going to be a lot of stuff in there. Oh yeah, the the books that are incredible. But uh, this this actually, if you haven't seen any of Bill Forsyth's work, he's a really good director. Um, a lot of kind of lower budget stuff. Now this one there, uh, that sinking feeling, is pretty much like it's, it's, it's like zero <laughs> micro budget. They call it a zero budget uh, one, and it's um, it's a pretty standard like it's. It's just a good film, a good working class type film. But yeah, if I can recommend anything to you at uh, this point, it's like the BFI stuff. They do really great jobs. And if you've never collected their stuff before, like much like Eureka, they have like uh, the, just a, a level of quality that, uh, that just blows my mind sometimes. And they put out stuff that, uh, that I really get excited to see. When I was in London, there's a BFI film festival going on. And um, I had planned to go down to uh, to see it, but uh, we had like uh, we had plans on the day that the film festival was uh, was happening. There was a director coming in to uh, show uh, a film that I wanted to act, that I actually want to see. Anyway, so because of that, uh, when you went to your local FOP, they uh, had a bunch of the BFI uh, DVDs for like uh, like two pounds, two two pounds fifty pence. I, I don't remember actually. I, if I remember it, I would have said his name. Oh God, it was a big director too. I mean like, like the level of like a Cronenbergian style, like somebody like in that level, a bigger director. <laughs> I definitely know my slasher stuff. I grew up in the 80s, Chris, and that's, that's why I'm old. I, um, I grew up at the time of like, of the whole slasher genre. I See, if I knew what he directed, then I know who it was. But I, that's the thing, I don't remember. You got a list of my slasher recommendations? So you took, oh, I, I actually, I take that as a big compliment, actually, because I would get like Asian recommendations from you. But uh, when it comes to, uh, I'm trying to think of what else to show you guys. Do you have any 1940s serial movies? I don't really. I mean, I got the only thing I got is the uh, Kino Lorber Adventures of Captain Marvel, which I do recommend if you like that type of stuff, um, because that is it's a really good like uh, serial. And every chapter, there's like 12 chapters in the serial, and every one of the chapters has a commentary by a different person. And it may talk about like the, uh, the serial chapter itself. It uh, may talk about things like, uh, like, like the comic book or other things. Indicator box sets right up here. That's, those are all indicator sets. I got Sinbad, Ray Harry has one and two, the first four volumes of Hammer. I had to cancel the fifth volume right now because I, I just can't afford to get it right now. And William Castle volume one and two, the Samuel Fuller Columbia box set. Five Tall Tales, and Night of the Demon. Uh, I can ha hardly recommend any of those. If you like horror, then William Castle, Volume 1. Definitely check that out. You just type it. Actually, thank you guys. I mean, I, I'm, having a, I'm not having the best day, so you guys really make my day. Do I have any propaganda films? Um... Uh, 
The only thing propaganda wise I think that I really got, though I would be interested in that type of film, is uh, is the, from Disney. I got like the, remember those Disney tins? I got a complete collection of the Disney tin sets that they put out. Uh, we know the ones that were curated by Leonard Malton. And they do like a uh, kind of a war film propaganda one on there where they show like the uh, privates and the foo stuff and all that type. And some of the stuff on my, uh, on one of my like uh, Looney Tunes gold collections has that as well. So Troy, you got the tin, you know what I'm talking about. It is a really cool tin too. Because people, when, when they think a lot of propaganda stuff, they kind of think of propaganda as like over and over there. But we did a lot of propaganda here as well. Like, like Capla, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, Francis, uh, well, no, no, who am I trying to say? Ah, the God that did. It'll come to me. Uh, no, Silent South hasn't really been out. Uh, like, it's, I think there's a DVD, uh, a VHS at one point, but uh, not unless it would be like a, because it's been pretty banned. And there's good for some good reasons, actually. Canon films. Oh, I should do a video on Canon films, actually. Um, Vincent Price films. I can add some to your collection. Uh, if if any of the the Screen Factory sets are out, definitely. But there's this really good set that was put out by uh, by Arrow Video called uh, called the uh, Vincent Price uh, Six Gothic Tales. Now, the book you won't get the book now because it, it, the reprint of this took you the book. But uh, man, if you can ever get the book version, it's got some great stuff. And uh, one of the things that I love about this is it gives you like a, a hardbound book. And aside from like the articles and stuff in the films, it gives you like the comics too, like the uh, comic adaptions of the uh, Vincent Price films done by Dell. It tells the terror right there. And there's like, a, there's a lot of them. So if you ever get the chance to pick that up, like if you get it at a decent price, really worth picking up. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful set. Films on it are Tomb Legia, The Haunted Palace, The Raven, Tales of Terror, The Pit and the Pendulum, and The Fall of the House of Usher. So you're solid with that set. But as is stuff that's still in print, uh, the, there's the Fly Collection. That's got a couple of, that's got Vincent Price and uh, the Midforce of the Time with Disney. Uh, the, yeah, I'm trying to think what they put out around that period. I mean, like there's the animation stuff, um, but Disney, there's like I love Disney movies, and, but yeah, yeah. There's some like I love from Whisper to a Screen. I uh, one of the neat things about that is they, if you've never seen it, it's it's a fun film. It's done by Jeff Burr, who directed Texas Chainsaw Massacre Three, uh, among others. But uh, I really like Texas Chainsaw Massacre Three. Um, but uh, there's a there's a documentary on there. It's like a feature length documentary. I liked the documentary so much on From Whisper to a Scream that I did a review of it years ago. And the people that made the documentary actually responded to me on the uh, on the video. And I actually really mad props them for them for doing that because I was a channel that had like no subscribers at the time. Uh, but they found my review and uh, they, they were really, really nice to me. Uh, so uh, I got to say, I really love Whisper to a Scream. It's one of the first times that, uh, that somebody looked at me and said, okay, uh, it was a validation for my channel at the time when there's like maybe 20 people watching. I don't have much Hilarious House Frankenstein here, but I do like it. Everything was bombed around that time before, <laughs> especially for Disney. Yeah, I have seen Sign South was not never a very good film. Fu Manchu. Can I be honest? And, and, and I mean, it's, those are films that were made like in, in a certain period of time, and definitely there's like issues with 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 those films. Kind of like the cartoons that you see, you know, the the Looney Tunes ones. The, you know, the ones I'm talking about. But one of my favorite sets that I got and like from Indicator is is Volume Three, and they definitely do kind of a Fu Manchu style characters within uh, within uh, within Terror of the Tongues anyway. And Chris Lee plays plays the role, uh, much like you would in like you know in the in the Fu Manchu movies, the sex, Romer films, uh, Romer you know films that were done. Uh, you know he did some for Jess Franco, he did some actual quality ones too. Uh, but uh, I was a big fan of those back in the day. Uh, I, I still kind of like them. 
Mm. But uh, I definitely understand the issues with uh, with the films. I. But I. Uh, yeah, I did. It was a different time period. So when stuff like that comes out, I, I think you know, do what Looney Tunes does. Do uh, just like get someone to come on and say, okay, this was a different time period. Do like a conversation. The thing with Looney Tunes though was like there were kids that were watching it, uh, and uh, so you want them to be, you know, to know better basically. Uh, with with the Fu Manchu films, it's usually adults that are watching it, and you hope that they know better and realize that you know the thoughts back then aren't like that. Do I think Gone with the Wind is? A little bit. Dig this sort of stuff. Pick up Mon Momotaro. I gotta look that up. Uh, I don't know if I had. I haven't seen. I don't think I've seen it. I'll try. Uh, so I'll... let me write down. See, I write down things that you, you guys mentioned too. There we go. Now I get the. Uh... <laughs> it's okay, man. That's what this is for. Two Japanese pro military propaganda animated films. Okay, now I'm really interested. To grow up and die for the empire. Whoa. Kind of. What was the one there that they put at that time? Like, uh, oh God. there were there was a few. I mean, like, like fascinating, fascinating stuff to uh, to look into. It was like the films that were done in the time, and uh, to see like how how so much has changed and how so much hasn't changed uh, when it comes to uh, to that type of stuff. But going on to I guess a different topic because I want to get to hotbed and 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 like what's the word? Politically charged uh, tends to make some people feel a little uncomfortable. So, but I don't mind talking with the older stuff like that. It's not too bad. How many King Kong movies do I have? Not many. I actually have the uh, the original King Kong. I got that in a in a tin set. Um, I have uh, the uh, the the remake like the. Uh, Peter Jackson once, not on a DVD, because I. Oh, it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's actually a good topic, uh, which I'm going to branch out to a little bit, actually. No, no, it's cool, man. Never be sorry about what stuff you talk about, because it, it's really uh, it's an interesting topic, and I actually would love to see a box set put out of like of that of that style of film. I would love to dive into that, and I've had more of the films and more knowledge on it. I would definitely talk about it. Uh, like that, we could do an in-depth topic on that, and do a really, a really cool discussion on uh, some of the films that were put out at that time, and some of the films. Like I consider a lot of John Wayne's, Wayne's films, uh, especially his war films, to be propaganda. Um, I have issues with John Wayne. Uh, I, got, I like some of his movies, uh, like his western stuff and that, but I have some serious issues with John Wayne as a dude. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but um, he was a very interesting person, and not a very nice one. But his war films got a lot of people to go to war. Well, he just made movies. Just saying. Just saying. Now, where was I? I was saying something before that. Oh, if you want to really like what really get into, I love riff tracks, right? And uh, Mystery Science Theater. I was big on riff tracks, Mystery Science Theater. So, as much as I love the films, like that they would riff. I got I found myself loving more uh, the the short films that they would do before them, and I love when riff tracks would do uh, this like like the, when they take a bunch of short films and they do it for their live shows. Uh, if you got Amazon Prime, for instance, they get, there's a whole bunch of riff tracks live on Amazon Prime. Um, if you get the chance to to buy them in, like in a store, definitely do it. But if you if you want to see them just well at your home. Uh, Rift Tracks Live is a great kind of like really fun, really easy going type of thing. They do like those short educational films, and they're hilarious, like the the old school educational films. And um, there's one really bonkers one uh, called uh, what's it called? One got one got one got food, one got fat, one got fat. I think it's called, and um, it's pretty. Hilariously, uh, like evil. <laughs> uh, 
um, and like there's these kids on bikes right but they have these horrible monkey faces I'm not even joking they have these horrible monkey faces and we're watching them like drive down, like on their bikes down the road and slowly getting killed like getting flattened by a by a big like steamroller going into like a, a manhole uh, just a whole bunch of hilarious stuff I know it doesn't sound hilarious watch kids get killed but it is so trust me it is John Wayne was told to get plastic surgery when he which he did when somebody convinced him to do it even though he didn't want to tax job not the searchers uh, see I don't mind like I'll, I'll be honest uh, I don't like John Wayne's like like he was an older like person so he had a very different uh, like mindset when it came to things so his playboy interview was, was horrifying uh, but uh I do like some of the Western films uh you know sounds of Katie Elder fantastic uh true grit uh, I, I really like and of course the quiet man uh not a Western but a really really good film uh with uh with John Wayne in it uh his, his best work for me was with when he worked with Ford but uh I can watch some of the the war ones but I know that his war films sent people like gung-ho into something that he he wouldn't do himself so that was uh, that was that was a nifty time I'll say that right now just saying just putting that out there that being said if John Williams were around right now totally kick my ass I didn't like Sons of Katie Elder that was like oh it was so cool and they remade it too a few times right four brothers that was Sons of Katie Elder um that was a was good <laughs> I could keep moving uh, it was a good Michael Keaton movie excellent Michael Keaton movie the shootest which one has A. Martinez in it? Do they have any detective monster films? I'm not getting detective monster films. Not that I can think of anyway. I think I could take them. I don't know. I have, I have boxing years. <laughs> Probably not. Mm -hmm. Brandon again. That's when he tried to do like a Dirty Harry thing. See, John Wayne was one of the guys that, like, when they're making Dirty Harry, uh, I think he was one. Of the, he was one of the names in that mix. But uh, Clint Eastwood ended up doing it. So John Wayne ended up doing Brandon again. And one of them we did really, really well. One of them, not so much. Um, I know it's hard to figure out, but Brannigan had this many sequels, and Dirty Harry had four. So uh, yeah, Dirty Harry did much better. And honestly, because because, because for me, the first Dirty Harry film is is on the shoulders of the Scorpio Killer. I uh, I love uh, that one. Uh, Thank you, Dave. The Cowboys. Yeah, because the young A. Martinez, right? Before, way before he did, he played Cruz on uh, Santa Barbara. I cannot, I like, I want to like read that out, like the, you know, <laughs> the but I, I can't do like a John Wayne impression. Um, not even back in my acting days could I ever do a John Wayne impression. The host. Uh, detective monster I, uh, I guess I mean I, I that's the guy that won the uh, the Academy Award actually for uh, Parasite I'm not gonna read the John Wayne comment because I, I can't do a John Wayne impression but I <laughs> so if I go into a super chat sometime we'll do it then but <laughs> right now this guy is not doing an impression uh, I actually got a few John Wayne boxes there too uh, like I got like uh, two two big ones like the <laughs> so you guys can can do that stuff read my comment below horticulture why horticulture are you are you trying to secretly somehow get me to do uh, an, an impression I'm not an impressionist I'm not I was never good with that type of stuff I used to stand in front of like the uh, mirror all the time when I was like doing back in the acting days trying to do that stuff what is your number one movie great I love the great escape I, I've got different versions of it um, are you wait a minute are you trying to get me to say horticulture because sometimes in Canada we drop our H's is is that it is that a secret is that is that the secret behind behind the horticulture thing um, but there are so many things I mean you guys we've gone from John Wayne to propaganda films and back to horticulture 
Um, I'm surprised nobody just said like, nobody said like, you know, why don't you, why don't you t say, say about, and, and, and wait a minute to say a boot, uh, but about, is it a boot? Is it, is it a boot? What, what people think we say? Uh, it's a boot, right? I got two John Wayne sets over there. I can bring them over. Uh, Patent shame apocalypse now for your favorite wartime films i don't have a lot of i don't have as many wartime films as i would like to have my collection to be honest with you um i was glad when the hammer set there had the two war films that they had on it because i didn't have those <laughs> my credit card why of course i will um that, that's my job i have to tell get people's credit card information well for my job uh when i'm buying when people are buying stuff uh I would never be, you know, you see like the videos online about like the the scammers and stuff like that. The, I would be, I could never do that. One because it's horrible, but two because I have a horrible head for numbers. So somebody would say like they're like we say in the numbers, and I'd be like, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, but I did watch a few videos online on that type of stuff. I'm like way behind on your on your comments here because I just. My number one war movie. Uh, I'll go with Great Escape because I, I can't think of any right now. But I, I have a lot to go from. I'm not a fan of Apocalypse Now. Uh, maybe I got to rewatch it. I didn't like Apocalypse Now when I first saw it, and I didn't really dive back into it too much. Uh, but I like the documentary, Hard Darkness, a lot more than I actually like the actual film Apocalypse Now. I know that's not uh, a, uh, a popular opinion. I like the Witchboard films. I really did. Tiny Contains in the first one. So right there. Uh, but Witchboard, like to say, it's not a romance. It's a bromance film uh, with the uh, Steve Nichols character. And I can't remember the other guy's name. I got it here, though. I got Witchboard here. I think I got Witchboard 2. I think Olive put that one out, actually. So where's my Olive collection? Let me just check. Uh, or was it like Night of the Demons 2 that I got? Maybe it's Night of the Demons 2. I think it's Night of the Demons 2. Let's see. Yeah, I don't have I don't have Witchboard too, but I do have the original Witchboard. It's actually right here. Uh, it's a Kevin Tenney film. It's actually fun. I like Kevin Tenney's work. Uh, there's actually some nice features on here. This is Tiny Container, absolutely most gorgeous. Uh, this is around the time when the, the White Snake videos were coming out. If you know who Tiny Container is, uh, she was utterly. She's a stunning redhead with long legs and. She, she was on the, the Google Doc list, of, uh, for sure. Uh, but a uh, great little film that I definitely, definitely uh, is worth checking out. And a great cast, too. I mean, aside from Tiny Gatane, uh Todd Allen, that's the guy, Steve Nichols in, in this one as well. And, uh, oh God, what's her name? Uh, Kathleen Willow. Yeah, the girl from uh, Roadhouse is in that. A Roger Corman films. That's actually down a little bit far for me to reach tonight. <laughs> but I will do that in, in, in probably my next video, Alan. Because uh, I got, like, Roger Corman is how I started collecting. Uh, again, I started collecting the Roger Corman collection, and that's how I got into uh, the, uh, I got into, like, collecting, like, companies again. She's on the cover of Rat. Not a big rat person, but uh, I would buy it for that. I'd buy the album. Did you comment above? Don't get love for Fanny Alexander. Uh, I don't know if it's his best. I'm going to say Fanny Alexander is his best. It's been a long time since I've seen it. And I got the Bergman box set, but I was waiting to go to Morocco to watch the Bergman box set. But if I'm stuck in the house for any long period of time, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll start watching <laughs> the uh, Fanny Alexander and all the Bergman films. Maybe I'll do like a Bergman night, which would drive my better half crazy because he's not a Bergman fan at all, actually. There's one that we would not agree on she's she doesn't like anything overly dramatic she and bergman bores her to tears to be bluntly honest with you don't you think so you do don't you my kitty cat's down here well one of them's down here hubert's down here and he's looking at me right now he's like you're gonna feed me soon aren't you or i'm gonna have to like paw slap you I, 
I was asked, like, well, someone mentioned on on, on uh, Facebook, like, what name two albums that you think are, like, perfect. And because I'm an 80s guy, I said Glass Houses by Billy Joel, which I think is a perfect album. And uh, Rumors by Fleetwood Mac, which I am sure is a perfect album. I should want to see Psycho too. Some of the best ones are, uh, unfortunately. Some of the best ones are. Uh, I, I I dated a lot of the psychotic when uh, in in well, yeah, yeah a period of time. Not now, but I'm of course not anymore. I do like some metal. I I'm a, I love. I'm more of a I'm more of a pop punk guy. Uh, it's weird. I got a weird. I like a bit of everything. Like I can come home, and when I was uh, when we lived in the in the old house that before this one right here. Um, Often if I was coming home, uh, you know, I'd, I'd go jogging, I'd come back, and I'd put on, like, opera. That's what I would listen to. So um, I had, like, an opera playlist, and I had, like, uh, I had a punk playlist, and, like, a pop playlist. I had a few different playlists on the Alexa, which, uh, which we'd use all the time. Yeah, that's thing, yeah, that's it. Weird music. Eclectic. You, got, you have eclectic taste, kind of like me. Um, but uh, that's... Uh, that's why when I got mentioned, somebody asked me about horror films here earlier tonight, and what like and how they deal with like kind of like society. I uh, I stated at the time I said horror films are are the punk um, is like punk music. It's the it's the kind of like the pushing against like the sometimes the anti societal like looking at society through uh, through a, a weird fun glass mirror type of thing, and uh, like horror is, is a bit. For film genres, horror is about as punk as it gets. So it makes pretty, it makes a lot of sense that I grew up like listening to punk music and watching horror films. So uh, my favorite '80s metal bands, uh, I, honestly, uh, Twisted Sister. Uh, uh, I know my friend was really big into Cinderella. Uh, they're more of a hair metal band. Um, I did listen to Rat. Uh, I'm not sure if are they metal, but Quiet Riot. Uh, they're more hard rock, I think. Um, I does anybody remember Quiet Riot? They did like bang your, like come on field noise and like bang your head with the metal health. Oh, Guns Roll. Oh, ACD. Yeah, ACDC is one of my favorite bands of all time. Uh, Van, do we consider Van Halen heavy metal? Really? Uh, or Guns N' Roses? Uh, Kiss. I, I'm okay with Kiss. I mean, I'm not. Uh, I'm not big on on Kiss. Like I got, I had a few of their albums. But uh, some of them, like, no, I just didn't like, just didn't really get, I, I could listen to like Bay City Rollers as much as I could listen to like, uh, actually probably Bay City more was Roll, more than I can listen to uh, to Kiss. If you're an ACDC fan, who's your favorite, like lead singer? You know, I had a winger like cap, I had a Slayer cap too. Like, are you more like of a Bon Scott person, or are you more of like a Brian Johnson? Tangerine Dream. When it comes to soundtracks, man, Tangerine Dream kills it. Bon Scott was more of the, like, the rock star. He was a rock. He, he lived that that life, and, and unfortunately, it killed him. But he lived the rocker life, the hard rocker life, insane amounts. Um, Brian Johnson was definitely more of like a more of a bluesy type. With his uh, with his style, and I think that they both suit their period in time, um, but they had like they both had like fantastic voices. Bon Scott had a voice that Brian Johnson couldn't couldn't like replicate, and thankfully he didn't. He did his own thing, and that's why I kind of kind of like it. Bandmate, yeah, actually, uh, that's the one I was going to listen to the other night. You said to go listen to some. Somebody said go listen to some Bandmate. So yeah, that's that's the one I have to listen to. There's a few. I, I just can't do like the death metal stuff. I, I can't do uh, death metal. Uh, I've tried it and I like the really dark stuff and it's like, oh, maybe I'm too old. Well, one of them passed away. Like I know that uh, they had, and also one had like, a th like Brian Johnson didn't have a throat issue. And because uh, I know the guy that used to think for Guns N' Roses, Axl Rose, actually, like, fronted uh, for ACDC for a bit, too. Tangerine Dreams, it's such great soundtrack work. And I think they're underrated when it comes to that type of stuff. 
when you look back at some like the kind of some of the cool soundtracks and some stuff that uh that just that, that people don't talk about and uh That's like uh, what's it? Huey Lewis, right? He's like he's he's pretty much like he's soon gonna have the whole to uh, to kind of like just just hang it up because of the whole thing. White lion. I know white snake. I can't. Don't know if I know white lion. To be honest with you, Chris. Uh, but I'm older, and you guys are like younger than me, so you may know some bands that I don't know. Loud race cars. That'll do it for you. As that tells you, stay away from the NASCAR and like that really bad Final Destination movie can tell you. But staying away from NAS NASCAR as well. Yeah, Yu Lewis. And I'm a huge Yu Lewis fan, by the way. Just like uh, getting that out there. Uh, love his music. Uh, Sports and Four. For me, those are two really great albums. Man Behind the Mask. I, I love Alice Cooper. He actually, I was working at Zellers when, uh, when Alice Cooper came in. He was just putting out his new album and it was just. Um, he just basically came in to like to have like lunch and stuff like that, and I I went to buy the album. I was going to get him to uh, to sign it for me. I want to go say hi, like say I'm a big fan of yours type thing. Um, but my my boss at the time, who didn't even know who Alice Cooper was, uh, and hated like like that style of music, said, "Oh, I think my nephew or something will know who Alice Cooper is." Well. In actuality, I think my boss was going to be selling it online. Um, so she went and took uh, like two or three of the CDs and said, "You, you watch. You know, you man the you, you man the area here." Um, so I had to stay in the complaints department and miss out on meeting Alice Cooper. So I was really peeved about that. One of those uh, ships in the night type of thing. So uh, yeah, uh, not a happy story. But my sister was working at the time, my youngest sister, at a uh, at a phone place. Uh, I think he came down there right afterwards. Oh, my sister was really in Alice in Chains, actually. The Blue Man Group. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I know who they are, but nope. Do I like Dokken? I like Dream Warrior. I don't know a lot of Dokken's music, to be totally honest with you, Chris. I uh, I do like some of their stuff, uh, but I don't... Like, if you asked me to name a Dokken song that's not Dream Warrior, I wouldn't be able to do it. But I know there used to be like this... Uh, metal hour that would come on on much music and my my cousin like my younger cousin he was like really into metal like uh, like way beyond me um, but uh but and he would have on like this the metal one all the time <laughs> I was wondering what you were saying there coffee talk I was never a big coffee talk fan actually um, I like Wayne's World. I like the Wayne's World stuff, but I just never got into Coffee Talk. I had certain characters that kind of that I liked, and other ones that really kind of like uh, like irked me on Saturday Night Live. Wasp. I like Wasp. That one I, I do know. And Iron Maiden. I was a huge Iron Maiden fan. Uh, and favorite was like is, is going to be boring, but I loved Run to the Hills. Uh, that was just a definitely a classic. I don't know Love Bites, but I do remember Def Leppard, and they were amazing. I, uh, when I went to college for the first time, I was doing journalism, and it was like my, it was my first semester, my second semester in journalism. And uh, there, my, my roommate, he, he was like from uh, St. John's, but it was like just outside, and he uh, had a, like a, a really kind of a thicker accent. So I couldn't understand like most of what he said, but I, he had like, everything Iron Maiden. He had like like all their like the tapes and he had like taped off concerts. He, you know, we'd go get them wherever he could. George Mortar Mortar, yes, love him. Um, because I'm a huge Daft Punk fan. And I love Daft Punk. My better half is even bigger Daft Punk fan. She knows their stuff like all the way through. T shirts. Is that as a band? I don't know, but as T shirts, I love T shirts. <clears throat> but if it's a band I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. Teachers of Iron Maiden. Oh man, the Eddie stuff. I wish I had some. He had them all. 
uh, and not just THC, I'd have like the banners, and he would get stuff that was like the, like he would, he had like concerts from like, from Japan, Japan and China and places like that. Uh, oh, he had them all. He had all the t-shirts. He had, he had everything. Anything like Iron Maiden you could get, whether it was like legit or, uh, or bootleg, he, he literally had it all. He, like uh, when I say he's a super, I mean he's like, he was a super fan. Um, I remember I moved out from there. I went into dorm. And then the guy that was, was a huge um, a Andrew Dice Clay fan, so he had all the Andrew Dice Clay tapes. So, uh, obviously. But, unfortunately, guys, at uh, 70 minutes, have I seen the movie? Electrum Mount? I don't think I have, actually. Had he met Iron Maiden? I don't know, because I couldn't understand what he said a lot of the time. He had a really thick accent. Well, I was one to go, yeah, I would, I would go in the mosh pits. <laughs> not now, probably not now, uh, but uh, but back then, yes, I was in I was in the punk music a lot. Uh, so when uh, you know, Generation X, uh, Ramones, like uh, a lot of those guys, I would I would I watch. Anyway, I am Aaron. This is my movie library. Thank you so much for joining me here tonight. You guys are the cult, and you guys rock it. Uh, I will definitely check out some bandmate. I promise you this time. Have a great evening there, and I will see you hopefully if all goes well, tomorrow, and uh, we'll pick up from where we left off, and we'll maybe we'll talk a bit more music. We'll, talk, we'll go some other places in the library as well. I just got to move this thing around so I can actually have this, like, at the right, right angle. And uh, the Ramones. I love the Ramones. Have a great evening, guys. See you soon. It is. Yep. No, no, tea. Definitely time for tea, especially after earlier on today. Time for tea. I got to work tomorrow. <laughs>